So my name is Brandon. I'm the technical specialist for Roboticine Inc. in North America. Uh, so our company is based in South Korea and we specialize in actuator technology. Now for anybody who's used a servo before, you use an analog signal, you send that to the servo, the servo tries to get into the position, but you don't know if it actually got there or if there are any problems until your plane crashes out of the sky or your robot structure crashes or something like that. So with our servos, there's an onboard controller. You can actually see the chip inside there. And with the Dynamixel system, you have the motor, the controller, the driver, sensor, network chip, they're all built into the actuator. And so this means that you don't need a really powerful computer to drive the actuators. Up to 253 devices, uh, devices are addressable over a single communication and power bus, providing that you can get power to all the actuators simultaneously. But over here, we're running it on something as inexpensive as a $20 Arduino. You can also use a USB device to connect it to a computer. And I forgot to mention the chief uh, advantage of the Dynamixel actuators is that you have bi-directional communication. So it uses a digital serial packet communication protocol. And so you can talk to the controller that's on board the Dynamixel. So you tell the Dynamixel to go to a position or to do a certain type of movement routine. And then it's giving you all kinds of feedback about what's going on in real time. So the demo we have over here is actually our Dynamixel XM430 series. And so when it moves in the clockwise direction, you notice that the water shakes. And this is because this is a typical servo movement, which is a step type movement. Servo tries to get up to speed and then move to position as quickly as possible. When it moves in the counterclockwise direction, you'll notice that there's velocity ramping. And so the speed is gradual at first and then gradual on the deceleration. And that's really important for any bipedal humanoid robots, which is what we specialize in. It means that you have anti-jerk built into every single actuator. And this is all user programmable, all user modifiable. For communication, you can use just about any programming language and just about any platform, Windows and Linux. Uh, we are part of the Ross open source community. Uh, and we do have a free SDK that has the API to talk directly to our Dynamixels and integrate them into your robotic structure or your next robot platform. That's awesome, nice. And is it possible to see that little guy over there? Yeah, um, I can start him up. Oh no, it's good. okay. <laughs> so he can actually tell you a little bit about what he is, what he does. So I mean, I'll, I'll give a little bit of a preface. This is our OP. Uh, stands for Open Platform, formerly called Darwin. Um, and so OP competes at a competition called RoboCup Autonomous Humanoid Soccer. And so RoboCup has set the ambitious goal that by the year 2050, that we will have bipedal humanoids that can play soccer without any human input as good or better than the top athletes of the day. So if you can imagine where Pele is right now, by the year 2050, maybe sooner, we'll have robots that can play just as good as Pele, and maybe even beat Pele. So starting out at the, the child scale uh, for his circuit of competition, he's about 18, 20 inches tall, uh, and then um, teams will use this for research and development before scaling up to Thormang, which is our full-size humanoid robot. So he's actually built using 20 of our Dynamixel XM430 actuators. And on board, he's running an Intel Nook. Vision's being provided by a Logitech C920. Nothing super complicated, but it is a fully modular system. So if you have a better vision sensor, better gyroscopic sensors, IMU, anything you want to integrate, it's an open platform. So you have the freedom to modify it and continue to develop it as you please. It's adorable. 